Looking behind us, you see the river behind us here. It kind of reminds me of the story down in Coos Bay with the river going on up like that. And at Coos Bay, where the river wound on up towards Coos Bay, eight miles from the bar on up to the uh, underneath the bridge there, there uh, were little sand islands along the way that would pop on up. They'd be out of the channel, but well, we got a call one day from this lady saying there was two young boys, probably 10, 12 years old, that had built a little raft and floated down the river and got on one of those little sand spits, which was probably only about 10 foot wide by 20 foot long, and they were on it, and their little raft floated away, so they were waving their arms. So we took the 40-footer, which is pretty fast, and we went up the river, and we had a balsa raft in there. That's a, a raft that's a probably six foot long, and has a net in the middle of it, and so if you get in the raft, you're gonna get wet, but you're gonna be safe. And when the young seaman, I, I was probably 20, 30 feet from this little sand spit with a 40, and I stopped there, so I couldn't go any closer. And he gets in the balsa raft, and he paddles over to the two boys, and they get them in there, in the raft, and they paddle back. And of course, they got wet while they were doing it, and their boys were already wet from playing in, in, in the water and this and that. So, we took them on back down to the station and their clothes were all wet so we put the clothes in the station dryer and put it, set them down with a blanket and gave them a, a cup of hot chocolate and of course the boys were really feeling good. Here they are in the search and rescue station and uh, just got to ride on the boat and everything. And we'd called their dad who worked in the mill uh, right where we had brought the boys uh, on this little island. They were probably only half a mile from where their dad worked. In, in, in the mill. So anyway, the dad comes in the station and boy, he has the look in his eye that you kids are going to get it. One was his own boy and one was a friend. And he says, hurry up and get ready to get out of here. I got to get back to work. And I said, well, they can finish their cocoa. And he said, no, they can't. Get, just get out of here. And he grabbed his one kid by the ear and he, got around. he said, you wait until I get you home. He said, you're going to really get it. And he gave the kid a whack in the butt and out the door they went and the kids started crying a little bit and he says, who in the hell do you think you are anyway, Robinson Crusoe? And the kids started crying and he pushed him in the truck and the way they drove off. And six months later, at eight o'clock at night, it was dark now, and we got a call that there was a lost boat up over on the, they called that the island, actually it was a spit there, and no roads down there at that time. And uh, there was a boat lost over there and we got, took the 40-footer and went up there and we seen this light blinking and somebody blinking with a flashlight back in the reeds and we wove our way back and we got there and here's the two duck hunters back there. So we got them there and we took them back across the river. I said, where do you want to go? He said, well, I work at the mill over there. He said, just take me to the mill. I said, okay. And so I'm getting the information. I said, and what's your name? He said, oh, Mr. Jones. I said, Mr. Jones. I said, weren't you the father of the two boys? I said, we picked up here this summer. He said, yes, I am. I said, well, who in the hell do you think you are anyway, Robinson Crusoe? And he says, oh, my God. And all his workers were around him. They said, what's going on? And I related their story to him. They said, oh, they said, are you going to apologize to your boy for giving him a, probably a good whipping? And he said, oh, dear God. He said, well, you better go home and start apologizing. He said, that's not. We're all going to call him on up and tell him that his dad and he, owes him an apology, and his dad said, I'll never live this down, and he walked off, and everybody started laughing, and we got our information and went back. Who in the hell do you think you are, Robinson Crusoe?